Okay, I am ready to go. So hello again, my name is Cindy Gast. I will be your Zoom host for the evening. I'm the president of our Charlottesville USA dance chapter and on behalf of our entire board, it's my pleasure to welcome each one of you to our free Zoom class tonight. We are very excited uh, to have Daria Zotova joining us tonight with her dance partner and husband, Kirill Goryatsev from DK Ballroom in Northern Virginia. Before I introduce them, I'd like to review the guidelines. This is a really wonderful, large group of people, and we have some guidelines for the Zoom class, which help make it most productive for everybody. So we ask, as I said already, we ask that you please mute your microphone for the duration of the class. It can greatly improve the sound quality, help with the video recording, and reduce distractions if everyone attending their class has their microphone muted. You may turn your video on or not as you choose. We will video the class and make it available afterwards. While we will not intentionally video participants, you might appear in the video. By virtue of attending this online class and with this video notification, you consent to be recorded in the video. Please turn your video off if you do not wish your image to appear in the recording. You will have the best experience during the class if you use the speaker view, which shows one large window for the person speaking, which that's be me right now. Um, if you have a question during the class, please type your question into the chat window and start your question with three question marks, if you remember to do that. That will easily let us see questions versus comments in the chat window. Daria may periodically ask if there are any questions and your question will be read to her. Feel free to type any comments or feedback into the chat window also. We love to know where people are viewing from. I've seen some of you do that already. And um, we, we're interested in how you learned about the Zoom class and we're always interested to hear from you and get any feedback you'd wish to give us. In the unlikely event that the Zoom session is interrupted by a network outage, please wait a few minutes and try to reconnect to our Zoom session. So um, I believe everyone is muted and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guest tonight. We are thrilled to have Daria joining us with her dance partner and husband, Kirill, assisting. Daria was born in Russia and always loved to dance and perform. She studied ballet, modern, folk, and ballroom dance at Togliati Academy of Art, receiving a bachelor degree of education and fine arts. Aside from dancing herself, Daria also worked as a teacher and choreographer at a children's performing art school and a children's modeling agency. In 2005, Daria arrived in the United States and joined an Arthur Murray uh, studio she quickly became one of the most beloved instructors at the studio, teaching everyone from beginners, wedding couples to pro-am competitors, traveling with her students to numerous competitions and becoming top teacher at multiple events. Daria also competed professionally in the American Rhythm and Smooth divisions at Arthur Murray competitions. In 2010, Daria joined Dance Factory and started training to compete at NDCA professional events. In her first year, she became Atlantic Coast Championships Open Professional Smooth finalist. Daria is certified with honors by NADTA in American Rhythm and Smooth. She teaches children, beginners, wedding couples, and competitive students, and dances at pro-am events all over the country. Performing, teaching, and competing have, be, have been her passion for many years. Kirill, originally from Estonia, started dancing Latin and Standard at the age of eight. For 10 years, he participated in numerous competitions in Europe and Asia. After pausing his competitive career at 18, Kirill passed Estonian dance teacher examinations and became a coach for kids at the biggest dance school in Tallinn. In addition to preparing students for their first competitions, Kirill also organized studio showcases and emceed the events. Kirill came to the US in 2005 to work at Dance Factory and soon realized that ballroom dancing is truly what he loves doing. In 2008, Kirill started training in American Smooth to compete professionally in the US. He loved this style that was new to him and within a couple years became Open Professional Smooth North American Champion 
Atlantic Coast champion and Ohio Star Ball Pro Rising Star champion. In 2016, after a successful Ohio Star Ball with his students, Kirill was named Ohio Star Ball Top Rising Star Teacher. Kirill has a degree in International Economics and Business Administration from Tallinn University of Technology. He is certified with honors by ISTD and NADTA. He enjoys teaching beginners and competitive students, as well as dancing at Pro-Am events all over the country. So you can see our website and Facebook Teacher Spotlight articles for, for this additional information about Daria and Kirill, and we will also distribute links to this information. Uh, just give me a moment. I need to find Daria and Kirill in my windows. <laughs> Where did you go? There you are. Okay, so look at you guys. <laughs> now on to our class. At this point, I want, I want to turn the evening over to Daria. So Daria and Kirill, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right, thank you, Cindy. Okay, uh, so we have um, prepared for you uh, a couple of um, practice ideas for several of the topics that uh, could interest you when you watch um, other people dance, good people dance, and you see them and you might think, how do they have such great shapes? How do they uh, take care of their arms so they look awesome? And how do they turn so nicely? So those are the things that we will be talking about today. First one we're going to be covering is how to have a better shape in a standard fold or in one of the American style folds such as shadow. Um, if you feel like uh, joining us, um, get up on your feet <laughs> and uh, you won't need a whole lot of space for this. So what we're going to do first is we will be creating shapes using different body blocks. So the first one we'll start with is our shins and our knees. <laughs> we're going to bring them forward, we'll bend the knees and move the shins forward towards the toe. Let's do this a couple of times. So we warm up the joints and the muscles. Cool. So next, we'll be taking care of the hips. So bring your hips forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Next, we'll be talking about the rib cage. Bring it forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. And the head will actually turn onto the side and it will go back. So the head will go back. We will put it all together. We will have our shins and knees go forward first. Now keep them there and now take your hips and move the body weight forward. So right now I feel like my weight is on the balls of my feet closer to the toes. I am almost not able to stand on my own. That's how much forward my weight is. So then we will take the rib cage and bring that over the hips. So now we more forward. And then the head will go back. We will straighten up and try this again. So first we'll have the shin and the knee. Then we will have the hip. Then we will have the rib cage. And then the head will go back. As the head goes back, the rib cage continues to go forward, leaving shoulders in one spot. So when I bring my head back, 
Shoulders don't actually move with the head. It's because the ribcage goes forward and my head and ribcage also almost rotate, waving the shoulders where they are. Okay, so let's try to do this five times. Only this time we will do it all simultaneously. The, all of the blocks will go forward, 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 and back. Straighten up, forward, 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 head back. And forward, 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 head back. And forward, 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 head back. I will have Kirill talk about modifications for the gentleman's part. Same thing. You can practice it on your right leg because that's how we usually start the dance with the left leg. So as Dario was demonstrating, stand on the left. Guys, you could practice the same thing on the right. Other than that, everything exactly the same except for the head part. We don't need to be such beautiful flowers like our girls. So we feel the spine stretch rather than that much of a neck stretch and the upper part of the body stretch. But the same thing, I move my shin bone forward, I move my hips forward, I move my ribs forward. But now I just slightly pick up the collarbone, slightly pick up the chin, and still feel like as if somebody's pulling me over the top of my head rather than my neck. So I have this long neck. But other than that, I'm very much forward this way, Darius. So the girls are here, boys are more. So this type of bending over feels like it's more backward than any other direction. So this one we will be using for coming to a closed position. Whenever you did, whether you're doing your bronze or um, silver or open, you will use this for closed position. We're going to demonstrate. The good news, I just then. Guys, let the girls come and do this. Because we have learned to go forward so much, you might have to, when you do this with a partner in the studio, you might have to uh, stop yourself a little bit further away than you used to. Because if you come up all the way like you used to and try to do this, you will kind of be like all the way past each other. So, by the way, if you're at home, we already saw your places and a lot of you have uh, walls. walls. So you can do that next to the wall. Yes, you can come close to close to the wall and move the shin bones, move the hips, move the ribs, and then you'll have that connection to the wall. So the girls will be more open here. You have a beautiful curve. That doesn't mean you back weighted because the center moves forward and the head moves back. So you actually in equilibrium. A guys will keep the head a bit more straight. But the idea of moving the base and the stomach and the ribs forward, that's the same with girls and boys, but we'll show the diary. You can do it with the wall at home. So I just stand, there it comes. And then move. And that's it. I will just quickly talk about how to connect your arm to your partner because you're bending back so much now that we need to do this one other thing to make sure that you can actually reach uh, to your partner. Otherwise, you'll be too far away. So this is what we will do. Uh, this is just for the ladies, but I promise it will be quick. So you will have your... So guys. Sit on the couch. Okay, so girls, uh, you will have uh, this side from the armpit to the waist, stretch out to the side, and turn forward 45 degrees. Now, bend your uh, arm and the elbow. You will see that you have this unbroken line from the elbow to the side, and that is what will uh, connect you to your partner. So you will have two themes going on. One theme is forward and back. And another theme is up diagonally and left. 
So the side and the elbow will be wrapped forward and the rest of the body will be going back. Right arm will just go forward. So you have your right shoulder with lower and then straight arm into this V position. All right, and now these uh, uh, body blocks also uh, are used in creating shapes in open folds. And this is how we're going to do it. Uh, put your right foot forward, left foot back. I will do this uh, back in you probably uh, like this. You can see my feet. Uh, so you will have your shins, shin bones and knees forward. Uh, left, no, and by the way, your right side will be on top of your right foot. So you will have same side leading. So shin bones are forward, hips are forward past the shin bones and knees, right rib cage forward past the hip, and uh, the rest of the shape will be back. You can have your head to the right or to the left as a girl. Or as a girl. Girl, as a girl too. Okay. Or as a guy. So here, let's try this together. Um, maybe three times to just get this idea. So you have mm -hmm, on the toes. So when um this is usually done on count two. So you will be if it's a waltz, you will be on the balls of your feet at the time. So you will have shin bones, both of you. And then hips, and then ribs, and then you're looking up. And one more time, shin bones, hips, rib cage, and then you're looking up. Mm -hmm. One more time, please. I'll do this one facing you too. Up on the balls of the feet, shin bones, and then you'll have hips. And then you'll have ribs, and then you'll have the head up. I will quickly mention a mistake that can happen by simply switching uh, the order of what you're doing. If you're doing, so the correct way is uh, shins and hips and ribs and head. But if you are doing, let's say, shins and then shape, then you are going to, if your rib cage is not over your hips, then you're going to feel or look like you're leaning back instead of you projecting forward. And the connection will be lost because you were going forward and all of a sudden the connected part started going backwards. <laughs> and oh, you have face. that. So there you go. So the right way to do it before you start shaping, first get your knees going and your hips going and your ribs going, and then the head. Okay. Yes, or the head can be also. Awesome. Hmm? Okay. Gotcha. Okay, guys. Gotcha. Okay, guys, we do again everything exactly the same, but our like radius, our amplitude of all that stuff is smaller. Yeah, so it's like girl, it's like a comb. She's the top of the ice cream. She has this big comb. She's she's doing a big shapes. We still do in exactly the same order. Very important. Still ankles, knees, still hips, still the ribs. But if then she curves all the way here, we more like a pillar. We stay straight. We just slightly tilt. So then you become more like a sail, uh, I mean, a mast actually, and she's the sail, right? Not that straight, we still have sway. So what is the step we're talking about? Well, very common, all of you have done some version of the shadow right turn, you end four, five, six of shadow right turn, here we go. Or maybe the girl just rolled it. So that's a good example. So see, I'm not actually matching her the same way. That takes away from the girl, also just kind of weird. So, I'm much more straight, yet I'm still maintaining the same sway. 
So to accommodate such a big shape that the girl is creating, I can have a flexible arm. And I should have flexible arm here. So I'm seeing, oh, she's moving in my hand. She's creating that sail look. So I'm just giving that to her. And I'm responding with my sway, but again, I'm not shaping as much. Just to be clear, this is sway, this is shape. So the girl does a lot of sway and a lot of shape. We do a lot of sway and less shape. Yes, guys, more virtual. Mm -hmm. Great, so that was um, our portion of the lesson that, is con that covers shaping. I would like to ask Cindy if there are any questions at this point. I do not see any questions yet, thank you. I will then move on to the next one and then uh, I believe we- Yeah, but feel free to jump in if there is a question, Cindy, you just let us know, like, just yell. And I, I so miss everybody's voice. It's very different to teach in a quietness. But I just imagine that you're all there at home with me. <laughs> okay, so the next topic we will be covering is arm styling. But today I would like to show you first how much you can, uh, uh, how much arm styling you can do uh, with just using your body. So we, this is what we will do first. Let's start with stretching from your waist to the armpit, to the side. Let's do this four times. Two, three, four. The other side, one, two, Three, four. Now we will turn 45 degrees and stretch forward. One, diagonal two, three, four. The other side, and one, two, three, four. We'll do that backwards too. One, two, three, Four, and the other side, 45 degrees back. One, two, three, four. Okay, so first of all, when you do rotation from all the way back to all the way forward, you actually don't move your arm. So even though it looks like arm styling, A pretty way to do it would be to actually not move your arm at the same time. So if I open it and close it, it will look worse okay. than if I keep it slightly rounded for now and I turn back and forward, back and forward. What we can do to make it even more pretty is when we turn. So let's stand with our side, with our arm out to the side, and we will stretch it to the side. Now try to take this underarm and the side of your body and bring it just forward and turn your arm inside and up. Inside and up. Inside and up. You will feel like you have a little bit of a cramp in the shoulder blade muscle here. So I got a lot of cramp. Wow, first two. Okay, so but when you bring your arm to close, rotate the arm and bring it in with your left muscle. To bring it back open, use your elbow, turn your arm. And use your elbow and the rotation of your body, just the rotation of your body to open. Now close it from the inside and under. Open elbow and body rotation. And again, 
inside and elbow out. Okay, let's do the other arm too. So open with body rotation, close with your left. Open with body rotation, close with left. Out with an elbow, in with the left. Out with an elbow, in with the left. You can um, you can think about it this way too when you're dancing shadow right turns. When you're shaping uh, with your hips towards the arm, and gentlemen, you actually when you do showcases or when you have open routines, you also might have an occasional streamline. place where you're doing a streamline and using this arm style too. So it's the same for both partners. So they bring your arms to the side and now use your legs and body blocks like we have discussed earlier. Now you will see that you didn't even move your arms yet, but they already look nice. And then you can open them in an L shape. Mm -hmm. One more time. Use your shape for arm styling, and then only a little bit open up and out. Mm -hmm. Let's do this maybe four times. Ready? Arms out to the sides. And we have body blocks and then hands. And again. Body blocks, hands. Uh huh. Voice like this. Body blocks, hands. Body blocks, hands. All right. Daria, may I inter interrupt a minute? We have two two questions. <laughs> two yes. questions. Uh, first question: Is the shaping different when in shadow position? Um, I bet you're close position. Trang, that was your question. Is the shaping different when in shadow position? Which, where were you talking about? The first part before the, the arm, Daria was teaching okay. the stretching uh, and the shaping. Okay. <laughs> so sway and shape, is that in? Check this out. <laughs> Check this out, yes. So uh, the shape, when you are in closed position, mostly will feel like it's backwards. So mostly it will feel like you are forward and back most of the time. You have more space to connect to the guy. So you're not just standing by yourself. In reality, you're quite a bit connected to each other. So there is so much pressure going into each other that we can go, well, you girls can go backwards a lot because you're even forward so much because you're like holding on with the Velcro at the man, so but it's it, a big yeah. space. But it feels like, if I would describe the bending, I would describe it as a literally a back bend. Like I'm bending backwards. Now for shadow, because you are standing in this same side lean position, when I do this, for me, it feels like more of a forward with a backward shape. I'm bending through the sides of my body, not through the back. So I would say it's very, it's different. It feels very different. How, yes, however, when you are dancing in shadow, there will be moments when you're going from one shape to another. Say you are in the right, uh, in the right turn and you are going to go back. And there will be time when you sort of have that closed position feeling. So you're not forward, but you are back for a second to change to then go into the side. So you will be in, in open places. You will be switching from backwards to forwards. In closed, you more or less stay in the back bend position but you use the same technique of blocks to get there through the front or through the side 
I hope that answered the question a little bit. What was okay. the second question? The, the second question is, how do you do the stretching motion? And that was from Clifford. Clifford? That's arms you're talking about? It's, it's, it's so much larger. Darius Daria stretches, stretches so much, much larger. That is not a question with Clifford. That's a statement. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not sure about which stretch. You're, you're talking about the arms. You, you meant this, or you talked about the close position. What, what are you referring to? Arm styling for the shaping. I'm talking about when Daria was first stretching to the side for her. It, yeah, that motion there. So since her motion is so much larger than my motion, the question is how, how does she do it? Or how do I get larger? Yeah, that's very key. A larger stretch. First of all, good news, guys don't need as much stretch. Mm -hmm. So if you need to get more stretch, you, I'm sorry, stretch, you just keep stretching, but you don't actually, like Kirill said, your range of motion is a little bit less, um, less stretchy. So you don't really have to do as much. Okay. So the amplitude will get larger just with practice. They yeah. will definitely get larger with practice. Even if you do like five minutes a day, every day, in a week, you will see the difference for sure. Because it's this block we're talking about. It's a weird block, um, like without jokes. It's, it's hard to find it because it's not shoulders. It's um, it's literally that rib cage, right? You have to isolate the rib cage from the hips. So when we stretch it, hips stay in place. Shoulders, of course, they move, but we're trying to keep them in place. So we're literally moving the uh, rib cage, and that's a hard thing to do. So just by practicing that isolation, eventually you'll get a bigger, bigger stretch. But um, in smooth, that is right, in smooth in particular, we guys don't have to do it as much. In, in light and during the Ukarachan and stuff, we we'll do it. But I, I would like to explain why, I'd like to have give an example of why, of where you would both be stretched but why the guy wouldn't need as much of it. So for example, we have a counter check movement, which is pretty common in Guinea's walls. And we are side by side. He's holding my hand and we're going to go to the front and we're going to stretch. So right here, I'm going to stretch my right side. Can you turn a little bit? Sure. Yes. So I'm going to turn my right side a, a lot, like as much as I, can't stretch it. But for Kirill, if he does his maximum, what it's going wait, to wait, do- Wait, 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 that's a common mistake. I'm a with the right now. This is fun. Because also it's totally happen. wrong. We're stretching. Yeah. And then, <laughs> no, that was planned. So, so the thing is then connection that we have will keep moving towards the girl. And there is no way I need so much of that so even if i can do the rib cage more i really should not be doing that because that makes no sense like the whole center just moved off both of our feet so actually guys that's we don't have to do that but we have our own set of problems to deal with i actually have to start i want to share we actually have to start the opposite action we already have to think about what's next and how can we take care of the left side of the couple. Which makes it bigger. Yes. Okay. So when we get into this position, I do stretch a little bit. I get towards my front leg, but now this locks. I actually start to take care of my left side, and I start to come out and pull the girl so out of the position. Left my side, left side, side stretches. Side. Yeah, so if we can say, do the side with this. I know we might not see both okay. of us, yeah, but it's a good idea. So say we get here, I get just a little bit, then that's it, I'm, I'm vertical. I'm not gonna lean towards my girl, because that's too much taken away from her. I'm actually gonna stretch left, and then I'll stretch a little bit more left, and then I'm already thinking of how to get out to whatever the next line is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we don't need that much motion, but we have to deal with that stuff. We deal with the other side of the cover. Cindy, is there another question that I just saw? 
or what what do we do? <laughs> Uh, so this is kind of a approach to a positive versus negative connection. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you're always going to have in smooth most of the time we work off the negative connection, I guess, if you say pull, yes, we, we pull each other most of the time in smooth. In rhythm, it's sort of like 50 50, if not push more, but in smooth, it's almost primarily. This pull. was an example of a negative connection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And yes, yeah, so we, yeah, I mean, that's true. I work on the other side, the result I pull because I'm already thinking what's next. So I'm starting to stretch to create popular. So I would like Cindy to kind of guide us on uh, what we need to do right now because I have seen a couple of windows pop up with questions. And uh, do, would you like for us to keep on with the topic or answer the questions? I think Cindy left. I think everybody left. <laughs> I don't know. Is it still there? Yeah. Oh, are we still there? Are we still there? People are there. Yeah, Cindy's not there. Okay. Well. All right. Well, so you're doing fine, and there are no questions currently. Thank okay. You. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Moving thank, on. Thank then. you, Clifford. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. So we were talking about. Arms, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we. I would like to jump. Yes. So now, when we move our hips away from the arm, so we were talking about when we climb the mountain and do our banana shape. Elbow goes with your arms are to the side, but it looks like I'm doing arm styling, and then I just swap it out for the hands. But when we move away from the arm, we apply this using the inside of the shoulder blade approach. And the more my hip goes away, the more I turn inside out sort of. So we would have, if we would dance an open right turn, we would have the first one first. It's not really an arm styling, my arms are to the side. Now I would open my arm. And then we continue. And right here, when my hips are going away from the arm, I lead with, see, I don't want to move my arm around. I leave it where it is. But because I rotate my shoulder blade, it looks like a cool line style. And then again, into sway, and then again, into the um, shoulder blade. Now, um, another thing I want to uh, 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 yeah, dynamic source. Okay. Yeah. Now, I wanted to also get your attention to this topic of dynamic. Usually, our dancing for um, the, for for beginning, it looks monotonous. So if we just learned the routine and we clarified our shapes and even our styling, it still might look a little bit like it's the same speed. So what I want to teach you is called impact. And you can use this technique to put five or six quick moments into each one of your smooth routines, even on a waltz, so that uh, um, you would wake yourself up and everybody else so you have dynamic dancing, slow and sharp together. So what we're gonna do is first of all, choose a direction into which we will send the impact. Let's say it's side. We're going to use our elbow first to clear the direction. So we put the elbow into the direction and then so once the elbow is set in place, we throw the rest of the arm into it. So we'll have a double action, elbow, wrist, elbow, wrist. We don't accentuate the double mess of it, but we still the top. We do the top, both, top, top. I also want to take, talk about the tone of the arm. If you can take your arms and really relax them. Okay, nice and relaxed. Now, really stiffen the muscle. You can see your own muscles or feel them. 
really, really tense so that you cannot move your arms. Good. Now, relax them halfway so that you still feel the tone, but they're not so like stink and stink. Yes. So that is the sense, um, this is the condition of the arms that you will have. This tone, but not stiff. At the very end, the arm will actually get stiff so that you stop the action. Hop. And at the very, very end, I want you to try this. So open your arm twist to the side and think of your wrist and sort of tighten up everything in your wrist like it's really 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 stiff so like the energy you're thinking about is all concentrated in your wrist so you open the arm and you feel your wrist sometimes this is what ends up happening what i suggest is that now tone your fingers with the final position, the way that you learned it, I don't know, through the pencil method, or I don't know, index pinky up method, but just feel that your, yes. your fingers bending backwards is um, the final tone. That is the end of your move. So if I'm hitting the side position, even though I'm throwing here, hop, at the end, you think about fingers going up, or for the guys, just fingers going straight. That's what I'm trying so to do. Yeah. I can do that. Straight. Yes. But right here, make sure you don't keep the arm tense the whole time because it will slow itself down. You just place the elbow and then it's a, it's a throw. It's a free flight. Woohoo! Flying and then freezing, like somebody sprayed it and it froze. And then Oh, just kidding. Okay, so now, I know, I know. Next, we'll be trying different direction. If you need to go diagonally, again, elbow is a good friend. Diagonally, diagonally, throw it. Diagonally, throw it. If you're planning to go diagonally back, don't go diagonally and then back. Turn your body right away. The elbow needs to go immediately to diagonally back and then throw. So let's try this one three times. And one, and two, and three. Good. Let's try the diagonally sign three times. And one, and two, and three. Good. Now, if you need to bring your arm up, this would not be the best thing to do. It's probably better that you prepare your hand in this position first, so that you can then launch up, and you cannot see my arm. So, pump, up, pump. And instead of throwing anything there, you'll be turning. So, and turn, and turn, and turn. Little secret for the girls, if we don't want to show this side of the arm, then don't show it. Turn it backwards. Then <laughs> you'll see is the front part, the bicep. Bicep rocks all the time. So all you have to do is to just turn that arm away from the front. So I'm lifting and then turning it away from the front. And then I get a good straight line. You no. guys notice I don't I don't break. <laughs> I like the, the yoga yeah. position. You guys notice I don't break the wrist as much as she does, so we don't need that umbrella thing going on. We just keep it a little bit more straight. Let's do one line yoga position. What? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done it? We're gonna try butterfly and yoga position. See, we don't know if this is ridiculous because they're all on the roof. Yeah. So yeah, we just do our thing. They might have left. So here. <laughs> We'll only see ourselves yeah. on the screen on the show's us. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. To move the arm back, we'll use impact, the elbow, and then open. To bring it forward, we're going to use the slow method of rotating the body. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's a fox for example. One, two, three. 
one, two. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, that was ridiculous. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So but it shows how much cooler it works because we used our connected to what Daria said in first. We just used our bodies and we connected our arms to the bodies and then we just added the dynamics as opposed to doing the arm, the arm, the arm and the body steep. Because at the end of the day, when people look at you, whether it's a showcase or competition, from far away, what they see, they see your bodies, they see your spine. And if they don't really see any rotation or they see a little bit of rotation, even if it's a very beautiful arm style, just like one piece of your body flying in the air, it's very small, it's not significant. Now, if you actually add rotation and then you add dynamics to that rotation. I was, I, I was thinking about this. Like, look, you have like one joint, two joints, three joints, and then like however many more joints. You have so many ways, and I do too. I have so many ways to screw it up, like elbow up to high or wrist or whatever, and I'm switching the whole thing. There's so many ways to get it wrong. If I just get a nice position and I just use my body to turn it, I have way less problems. Because I don't you know, really do it. Relaxed, or relaxed kid, you still have a lot of volume. All right, next topic. Arms, questions. I'm waiting. Bel 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 yeah. Turns. Watch, watch this. I see if it pops up. <laughs> okay, if it pops up, somebody will let us know. Turns. Yeah, all right. Okay, there are lots of different turns that we do, but Kirill and I. I'll just make a quick comment. Uh, Cindy's talking, but we can't hear her, and I don't think she knows it. I know it. You can't hear me. Uh, I yeah, can't we can hear, hear her from you. Little. Okay, so Cindy, why don't you type it into the chat and I can convey it to them. You can hear me okay? Yeah, we, we yeah. Yes. Okay. Why don't you go on to turns until we see what Cindy has to say. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I'm just gonna do one turn. Well, this, oh, there oh, you go. There you go. Oh. No question. No question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So this one turn, Covers 90% of pretty much all the turning actions in smooth, including pivots in closed position. It's it's pretty crazy. It's like really, really, really good value for the one turn. So there are several ingredients that we will need. First one is taking your left shoulder and left leg. I'm gonna sorry, turn backwards. And we're going to try them all behind you. And now we will set them over forward. And then get back and forward. And back and forward. When you move it forward, don't put the heel down. And do try it, like really, like physically try it, because uh, you might have. You know, not it might not work, and then you have a question, and then you will answer it, and then it's going to be the best thing that happened today. So try it out. So one more time, the foot was behind, and now it's in front. Foot was behind, now it's in front. Foot was behind, now it's in front. Huh? Other side. In there. All right. Okay. Next ingredient is going to be. So you see that heel? That that. The heel. We are going to work on turning that heel in. Turn it in. Turn it in. Turn it in. So let's put these two together. Have your left foot behind you and left shoulder behind you. Now swing your left side forward. Hop up. Now, take that foot and turn it in. Now you can put your weight on it a little bit. So, maybe three more times, just this. From the back. Huh? Um, Kirill suggested we also try it in a um, position when you are up on the balls of your feet. So, you can start flat. But then go and roll the foot. 
and then take your left front foot and turn it in and keep it on the ball of the foot. Two more times. Swing it, turn it, huh? And swing it, turn it. One time, and sorry, swing it, turn it. Cool. One thing left, and that would be the pivoting action. So check it out. So you're here. Stand on that left foot, and in this position, like you're frozen, like your little doll inside of the uh, kid's jewelry chest. So you're going to just turn, tuck, 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 tuck pivot in that position. So let's try it one more time. We're going to swing the side. We're going to turn the foot. The other one does turn too. Yes, but this one's leading. And now you're going to feel it. Woo! Yes. One more time. Swing it. Turn the feet. Feel it on the left foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Swing the side. Turn the feet. Feel it on the left foot. Okay, so why, why do we need this thing? Where can we use it? In so many places. I was really looking forward to telling you this. Ta -da. So pretty much in a uh, silver level, for example, um, almost every turn in your wall, so you can fox shot, if you roll out of the shadow, if you roll into the shadow, is this three-step turn, yeah? So like a three-step pivot kind of thing. So for example, we just finished shadow. Well, in this case, guys, don't turn. Usually with your chassé, uh, let's say it's a wall, so function doesn't matter. Girl, that's her turn. So there so she is. First, I step forward. I don't turn right away. I step. Then she turns. Then I turn my feet, and then I turn on that foot, and then I exit. In medias balls also. Uh, step. Then I don't turn right away, you see. I first take this side and I bring it forward with the guy. Then I turn my feet and then I pivot, I brush my feet here and open the feet and come up. Mm -hmm. Same way to get into the shadow would be uh, the inside rotation, but the same thing, having a step. She does swing the leg. There she goes. Going to turn her feet. Just say. Now, those are examples where I don't have to do anything, but we have steps where I turn, of course, in the syllabus. Let's say we did the cross. Like we, we had the side cross, this very common step. Both of us do a free spin. Here we go. First step, we do the same side leading. Then we swing the and side. We both swing the sides forward. Then we turn the feet, do a little brush and action in the middle to make it look pretty. Come out. So this is a very uh, even even in bronze when girls dance uh, inside churn. Let's say we just finished the uh, the box left box. One, two, three, and she does an inside turn under a turn. One, she swings it. I lead her shape. Transfer feet, brush in action, or extra pivot again back to the box. So really, that that three step turn is quite quintessential. Like even if you have to syncopate later, mm -hmm. it will still be based on the same technique. You'll just add an extra step to I even want to demonstrate the syncopated one to you. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go one, and then you will swing first. What left side closes. So it looks like you keep traveling. Then you turn your feet, brush, and then forward, and then back. Sorry, you don't brush on top. <laughs> so we'll do one. And one, the fear brush. So you stand the foot, turn the feet in an open position, and then one more, one more step, and then you lower. Now, another example of this would be 
if you are doing cantered, if you're open level and you're doing cantered turns in units, walks, let's say we'll do it together. So you will step forward, then you will turn the back foot and shoulder forward like that. So it'll still look awesome. Then you turn this foot and pivot and you're done. So you can do the one and the two and keep going like this. Now also, tango, you don't do them close, but if I want to change uh, places with my partner, I'm going to step that way first, then I'm going to swing my side and my foot that way, turn my foot in here, and then I'm done, I can just do my ipatar. I step, I swing the foot, I turn in, the heel, and then I'm going to do the rest of my style. This is really, really, really the most common type of turn. Even if you're doing pivots in close position, you still, I know it's eight o'clock, we're going to say bye bye soon, but we're turning and so we're swinging. swinging and pivot. Turning and so, like, basically, the bullet point of this presentation is, is that we do not really turn. We swing, swing means this, right? This is swing. We have three S's. This is the swing, this was the sway, and then this is the shape. So we talked, uh, right here, we talked about that we take a step, we definitely swing forward, which helps us to move. It looks like we're pretty yeah. moving instead of turning in place. Now we're ready to turn, and then we move again. Yeah. All right, okay. let's see questions. So, Couple of comments, first of all. Uh -huh. I want you to know we didn't start promptly at seven, so you do oh, yeah. have okay. some time. Oh, cool. Okay. So we still have time to answer the question. Yeah. I, would, I would say you have you know six to eight minutes if, if you'd like to use it. Let's well, see. I'd like to know what the questions are, so then maybe we can yep. clarify some of the things. I think there's a comment here saying that they really like how you show the turns in examples of choreography. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I, I don't know, uh, let's see, someone's asking, do you always turn with your heels up? Okay, that's, very, that's a very yeah, good question. question. So your heel will always be up until the very end of the turn. Heel coming down is a is signifying that the turn is complete. So if I am here, I'm going to point it down a little. So I can be flat split and then going forward with my swing in this angle. So I'm not going to really rise up on my toes. But this heel will still be off the ground. So then I turn the heel and it will only still off the ground. It will only be down when I am done with my turn. It actually stops me. So you say when I'm going to quit, and then I'm going swinging the side, turning the foot quick. I'm done with that. Put it down, and then I continue. Now it can be on the toes if you're doing it on count two in walks, or if you're sick of being, then you will have your one, then you'll have your swing forward. You will turn your feet and up on the toes. And even after you turn to on that pivot to five, you will still be up on your toes. Still up on your toes. Then you will come down. I hope that you So basically, if you want to be done, go on your heel. If you want to continue, stay up on your toes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank I you. would like to point out to people in the audience, since there's been a lot of material that the recording of this lesson will end up getting posted on the YouTube channel. And if people want to review some of the details or even uh, videotape their own example of excerpts that they can go to the, uh, to our chapter's YouTube channel, Cindy provides or will provide instructions on how to do that. Yeah, go ahead, Zaria. Uh, yes, so I wanted to also say that sometimes when we turn, our head 
was previously already in the direction. And, and the side swings under it. The diving side saying that it is false. Not just as an example. As an example. You can have the head still turn in that direction. Can you illustrate that with the full three step turn, please? Fantastic. Thank you both for this. You guys have been a fantastic Excellent. crowd. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy. This has been so great. So many people attended. Um, I'd also like to take a, a brief moment to speak to the participants and thank them for joining us. But um, secondly, I wanted to let everybody know that USA Dance Charlottesville provides a way for us to show additional support to our teachers. Uh, we really want you all to survive this ongoing pandemic. <laughs> so um, USA Dance um, will provide contact information, including donation information for each of our instructors uh, following the free Zoom classes. So, and we make it easy for you to privately send individual contributions to support our dedicated teachers if you choose to do so. Um, I will be posting a PayPal email address for Daria if you wish to send her a contribution. We will also follow up with uh, posts and um, information on our website with that information. So um, thank you again, Daria and Kirill, for spending this time with us. We, we so appreciate it. Oh, we love it. Thank you so much for inviting us. So much Welcome. Fun. 
One other Thank thing, so everybody, I think, I think Clifford already might have mentioned this, but um, we will share the video of this class on our YouTube channel and it will be, you'll be able to download the Zoom version if people wish to do that. So we'll, we'll put out information about the YouTube uh, video once it's available and we'll certainly get it to you guys too if you wish it. Um, yeah, my and, mom wants that stuff, so yes, please. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yes, we'll get you, we'll get you a copy. Um, and, and that's about it. Um, you know, we'll have more, we'll put out more publications for participants about every month we have a class like this and we have some more things planned for 2021. And so thank you and we look forward to seeing people next month. If you enjoyed yourself this time, we'd love to see you again.